This is the land of Havilah, John 10b. They're about to press Jesus for an answer. Is he the Christ or not? Verse 22. It was the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. Comment. The Feast of Dedication is Hanukkah, which is somewhere between late November and late December. Briefly, about 200 years before Jesus lived, Syrian king Antiochus Epiphanes conquered Judea and persecuted the Jews horrifically. He confiscated all the scriptures he could get his hands on and killed anyone who adhered whatsoever to the law of Moses. He desecrated the temple and desecrated the altar by performing pagan sacrifices on it. Then the temple was neglected to the point that there was a forest of weeds growing in the courtyard, 1 Maccabees 4.38. But against overwhelming military odds in the 160s BC, Judas Maccabeus led a successful revolt. He retook Jerusalem, restored the temple, and reestablished worship and sacrifices according to Mosaic law. So the holiday celebrates a successful revolt and reestablishment of Jewish rule, but in the narrowest sense, as Judas Maccabeus called for himself, it's a celebration of the dedication of the new altar at the temple, 1 Maccabees 4, verse 59, thus Feast of Dedication as it's called here. The books of Maccabees aren't part of the Protestant Bible or even of the Jewish Tanakh, but still it's apparent that the revolt was a great deliverance by the hand of God. So it was the Feast of Dedication and verse 23. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in Solomon's porch. The Jews therefore came around him and said to him, How long will you hold us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you and you don't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify about me. Comment. It's the question of the hour. Is he the Christ or not? Two chapters ago, some said, quote, This is the Christ. But some said, What does the Christ come out of Galilee? John 7, 41. He didn't directly answer the question whether he's the Christ. He said, I told you, but when did he tell them? As far as what John has recorded so far, he plainly told the Samaritan woman at the well that he was the Christ, John 4, 25 and 26, but that was the only time so far that he's been explicit about it. Peter said four chapters ago, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, but Jesus didn't confirm it or deny it. He only said, here, my works testify about me. In the last chapter, anyone who confessed him as Christ was to be put out of the synagogue, John 9, 22, so it wasn't politically correct to even consider it. So his works testify about him, and verse 26, But you don't believe because you are not of my sheep, as I told you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Comment. There's no need for Jesus to tell anyone that he's the Christ because his works testify, and as he said, quote, The Father has testified about me, John 5:37. And, quote, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, John 6, 44. So why come out and say it except to get him and his believers in hot water? Speaking of the sheep who hear his voice, verse 28, I give eternal life to them. They will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Therefore Jews took up stones again to stone him. Comment. He said a couple of strong things. In verse 28, I give eternal life, which was pretty audacious, but more audacious than that, I and the Father are one. Then out came the stones. Verse 32. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? Comment. This was Jesus' answer to the picking up of stones. He said, For which of my good works do you stone me? Verse 33. The Jews answered him, We don't stone you for a good work, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Isn't it written in your law, I said, you are gods? Comment. That remark came from Psalm 82. Verse 1 says, Quote, God presides in the great assembly. He judges among the gods, end quote. Verses 6 and 7 say, quote, I said, you are gods, all of you are sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like men, end quote. There's no context around those verses that would elucidate them any further what God meant when he said, you are gods, but clearly he was talking to men when he said it. 
verse 35. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you blaspheme because I said, I am the Son of God? Comment, he said the scripture cannot be broken, meaning if it's in the scripture you can bank on it, and also meaning every prophecy will be fulfilled. Some say the scripture is broken and pay no attention to it. Jesus said it cannot be broken. He staked his life on it. Quote, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3, because he knew that he could depend on the scriptures that he would be, quote, raised on the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 4. But his immediate point in these verses is that it's not blasphemy to say, I am the Son of God, if the scripture says of all of us, you are God's. If we want, when Jesus quotes the scripture saying we're all gods, we could hear it as him denying that he's anything special any more than the rest of us. But he didn't say exactly that either. Verse 37. If I don't do the works of my Father, don't believe me. But if I do them, though you don't believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Comment. He says the Father is in me and I in the Father. That's certainly a claim to be in concert with the Father, as opposed to being a heretic. He's telling them what they need to know without directly answering the question. Verse 39. They sought again to seize him, and he went out of their hand. Comment. Again, God protected him supernaturally, which was a sign of itself. Verse 40. He went away again beyond the Jordan to a place where John was baptizing at first, and there he stayed. Comment. There's no overall documentation of the passage of time in the Gospel of John. It says he went away again beyond the Jordan, but in typical fashion it doesn't say exactly when, and it says there he stayed, but not how long. Verse 41. Many came to him. They said, John indeed did no sign, but everything that John said about this man is true. Many believed in him there. Comment. John performed no sign except that he was dead on accurate with his prophecy. He didn't perform any miracles at all, but just from his preaching, quote, they all held John to be a prophet, Mark 11:32. So if John could be known as a prophet by just his words, Jesus could be known as Christ by his words and signs. John 11 is next at landofhavilah.net, John 11.